Hey, what's up everybody? It's Nick Quintero. And today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to do a vintage style distress on a t-shirt design. All right, so today I'm gonna to be working with this Batman logo that I got from brandsoftheworld.com. So I've already downloaded this Batman file. I try to use Illustrator as much as possible versus using Photoshop because Photoshop is gonna create bitmaps and if they are created too small, they can't be scaled up or down. Using something like Illustrator creates a vector file. So if it's changing from a kid's t-shirt to an adult t-shirt, this is the best way to make sure that you will have the right kind of file. You probably have found some distress patterns or some, you know, vector grunge textures or whatever and brought them into Illustrator and noticed that they had a ton of points and the file size became really huge after that because there was so much data involved with using those vector live traced textures that people offer up everywhere online. And they also don't really look very good. They're usually really unnatural and they don't look like a real vintage t-shirt. So what I've always liked to do is create the distress texture myself. And I don't like big, thick, chunky textures. I like really nice, dusty textures. It gives it a natural faded look. So even when I'm making a vector graphic with distress on it, I still have to use Photoshop. I've already taken this same EPS graphic here and opened it in Photoshop. So what I've done is I set up a file with the Batman EPS and another layer on top of it. And I have a um, Heather texture in the background that I already had. I might use it later, we'll see. So when you're creating a dusty distress pattern for a t-shirt, there's two separate ways that you can do it. If you're doing a graphic that is already made in Photoshop, it's fine to use a mask. So all you do is you select your layer with the art on it and you click on this little button down here for the add layer mask. And now you can paint directly on this layer with black selected as your color. And when you start drawing, what it's gonna do is draw directly on this mask layer in a non-destructive way. So you can toggle this on and off by holding shift and clicking on it. So your original graphic is not destroyed by erasing. But I'm not gonna be using a mask today because I want to be able to import this layer into Illustrator later. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you my brush settings. I actually use a default brush, just this regular uh, soft round brush and bump up the size to something like 200 pixels, but I kind of mess with the size as I go. But this is a great place to start. Now, this is the most important thing. You wanna make sure that your mode is set to dissolve. Click on this menu here. It'll be normal by default. So just scroll down and click dissolve and you're good. Now on the opacity, I like to bump it all the way down to 10%. So the more transparent it is, the more dusty it's going to look. The other important thing is to make sure that you have this button here selected and that's using pressure for size. So what that's going to do is allow you to play with the pressure if you're using something like a Wacom tablet or a Cintiq. Once you have your brush all set up, you're gonna come into your second layer, start drawing on this with your brush. Now I have white selected because I want to be able to see what this looks like as it's dropping out to my background color. But if you change it to black and draw over here to the side, you can kind of get an idea of what the brush strokes look like. So you can see it's nice and dusty because you're using this this way. You can actually go back and draw over this again and start to darken up some of these areas. So really what you can see is that the dissolve brush allows you to create variation in how much you know texture that you're putting in one spot. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that and I'm gonna go back to my white layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here at the top of this Batman head and I'm gonna paint with the white and just start adding in some distressed texture. So the reason why I use this brush is because I don't like to just throw a texture over the whole graphic. I like to pick and choose where I'm actually putting my distress. And so you can see I'm starting with just the black and kind of moving around this yellow, but I'm not being super precise because I'm gonna hit it again whenever I go back over the yellow parts. But I really like to paint the parts that I want specifically. It gives you a lot more control over where you're putting the distress pattern and it lets you see what it's looking like as it goes because you can always zoom back out and decide if you like it or not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in this black and speed it up a little bit.
Okay, so now that all that heavy black is filled in, I'm gonna go back and touch up some of these parts in the face color. I really like to distress out the face colors a little bit more because I think getting like big pink and peach colors printed on a t-shirt can look a little weird. So on these um, letters and things like that, I like to make some spots where they have like a big, thick distress chunk taken out of it. It just kind of gives you some good variation and lets you really see what's going on in some of these parts. It's a uh, good practice to kind of make it heavy in areas where if you were creating this text by doing two brush strokes, this is where two strokes would meet here on the top of the T. So I like to make the distress a little bit heavier in some of those parts. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. So I do think it looks a little bit unnatural here in these big chunky spaces, like where this black is still there. So I actually might go through and turn down the opacity on my brush and change it to maybe like five and then draw over these spots lightly so that they still get some distress, but you still also see that variance from when I did it with the 10% brush. Maybe even use this one to kind of make some chunkier spots here in the middle. Just make sure that I'm covering all of these spots here so they don't end up 100% black. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this 5% brush here, but I'm gonna turn the size down. I'm just gonna use the left bracket to take it down to about 100 and just start painting these shapes in here into the face. And I'm gonna hit this pink really hard and Follow the flow of the cape here to give it some shape. I'm gonna do a circle pretty heavily right here on the logo. And then I'm just going to kind of follow the shapes of, you know, the drawings here, his arms and chest and whatever. So it takes a little bit more time than just tossing a you know pattern that already exists over it, but I think you get a much smoother and much more natural looking distress whenever you take the time to paint it on here specifically. Now, if you really, really want to make this thing distressed, you can absolutely bump the opacity up to maybe like 25, use a really large brush, just, you know, kind of start taking these things way, way heavier. So I'm actually gonna make a second layer here for this, just in case I don't like what it looks like. And I'm just gonna throw some real heavy white distress in here. This stuff works really well whenever you're doing, like say it was just the big Batman logo and you wanted it to look super vintage, like a really nice like Target t-shirt. This is really all you have to do to it. All right, I do like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge both of these layers. And so if your design is in Photoshop, you know, this is all you need, then you're pretty much done. Let's see, let's preview it on this mask here. So I'm gonna delete the mask that I already have. I'm going to hold command and click on this image part of this layer to select that distress. And then I'm going to apply the mask to my layer one here. Okay, so that went backwards. So I'm gonna select the mask and hit command I to invert it, turn off my layer four. So you can really see how that distress is going to show the ground color and really get those textures from that Heather background, which is why I put it in here because I really wanted you to be able to see that. This looks really awesome to me. And if this was only going to be in Photoshop, then I feel like I would be done. But I wanna take it one more step and show you how I would use this distress in Illustrator. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all of my other layers and I'm going to turn my white uh, layer four distress. Let's go ahead and label these because I should have done this from the beginning. I didn't. So now you can see my mistakes so you can learn from them. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Command I to invert the colors on this distress layer. And you can really see what I painted here. The first thing you wanna do is click on the image menu at the top and change the mode to grayscale. It's gonna ask if you want to flatten it. So make sure you click yes. So now I go back to image, go back to mode, and now you wanna change it to bitmap. So it's very important that you do both of these things. Otherwise, this next step will not work. So you can just make sure that it's on diffusion dither and the output is 300 DPI. So I'm going to click OK. OK, so now I'm just going to save this by pressing Command Shift S. And I'm going to make sure that I save this as a TIFF. So just click on the Format menu, scroll down to TIFF, click Save. And the default options are usually already set, but you can copy these if yours are different. So just click OK. And then we will go back into Illustrator. And we're going to go to file open, which is command O, find your Batman distress TIFF, 
open that as its own file, copy that and paste it into the Batman AI. It looks a little funky right now because the distress is still black, but this is the magic of making it the TIFF. So what I'm gonna do is select my layer here. And because it is a TIFF uh, made from a bitmap, you can actually make it any color that you want. I'm gonna choose white since that's my background color and boom. This is a print ready file from Illustrator with vector capabilities to scale up. If you zoom super far in, you can see that this is just a really, really harsh bitmap file. And it looks kind of crazy on screen, but when it comes to printing, it's gonna look absolutely perfect. So if you wanna use something on screen, you can keep the version in Photoshop and just export a JPEG of that. And it's gonna make it look visually how you want it. If you want it to print, I highly suggest doing the TIFF version and bringing this distress over here into Illustrator and changing the color. All right, so that's it. That's how you make dusty distress texture for a t-shirt design. I really appreciate you checking out this tutorial. I'm going to be having more tutorials, a lot of graphics, a lot of free fonts and things available if you subscribe to my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Nick Q. I also sell all of my fonts on Creative Market individually if that's something you're into. And I'm going to be doing more and more of these tutorial videos. So just uh, hit me up and let me know if you have any requests of anything that you specifically want to see. This was actually a request from a user on Reddit in the Adobe Illustrator sub. So feel free to ask me any questions and ask for any advice and I'll see if I can make a tutorial for you. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.